Hi everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. In this video we're going to look at using REST APIs with our Python code. So why would we want to do that and what is a REST API anyway? REST APIs allow us to access and retrieve data over the web via HTTP and a standard URL, much like you would see in a browser's URL. Examples of this data could be location data, weather, social media feeds, or financial stats. The possibilities are endless, but the point is that REST APIs allow us to easily access other data sources. And let's face it, coding is rarely done in a vacuum. You need data. An API, or an application programming interface, in its broadest definition is basically a set of rules that allow your, allows your code to talk to other applications. APIs are everywhere, and we've used them quite a bit in this channel to encrypt data and other stuff. A REST API is a specific type of API that allows us to connect our code to other apps using HTTP. That's one of the main differences. A developer creates the REST API to a resource on a server. Let's say, for example, our developer wants to create an API that provides the latitude and longitude coordinates um, based on a given address. She writes the API and makes it accessible to the internet on port 443. We create a HTTP GET request that includes the URL and some parameters like the address and our API key, our access token, that we retrieve from the developer site. We make a request to the API and the server returns the data, typically in JSON format, which we can easily parse to get the information we need. So that's it, it's easy. Um, and of course we can send data as well with the HTTP POST method and much, much more. There are some requirements for a, an API to be a REST API or a RESTful API, but most of these requirements are concerned with the development of APIs. So let's fire up a few real world examples in PyCharm to see how these actually work. The way I'm going to do this is first I'll walk through the code and at the end of the video I'll walk through how to get some free APIs for yourself. I'm going to work here with some common APIs from Google, Twitter and a site called Rapid API. I'm not really endorsing any of these APIs but I found them to be relatively easy to use and of course they're free which is not always the case with REST APIs. Sometimes you do need a paid developer account to access certain APIs. So the first API we're going to work with here is from Google, and it is similar to the example we just used, where we're going to send an address and get back the latitude and longitude coordinates. You will need a Google Cloud Platform account to get this information, but I'll show you at the end of this video how to do that. For now, we're just going to import the request module, which we'll use to send a request to the API, and we'll create some variables that we'll use for our parameters. So the first variable is obviously the location. I'll choose 42nd Street in New York. This is the location we're going to get the latitude and longitude coordinates for. Second is we need the API key. Now I did get this from Google, and I saved it to a file, and this is probably a good practice, and then you just simply open up the file and read in the key and that will give you the access code that you'll need to access the information on Google. So now we're going to create a variable for our parameters. We'll call it payload. You could call it anything. And we'll put our key value pair in here. This is a standard dictionary format for Python. So the first key is the API key. And the address, then the location, address and location is the next key value pair. We change these brackets to the curly braces. And will send this as our parameters. And the dictionary format is very common when we're working with APIs, both in the response, in the JSON format, and in the input. So the URL, this I received from the Google Cloud Platform. And if you actually copy this URL and put it into Google in quotes, you'll see where I got the documentation and information on this. Just make sure to keep it in the quotes, or it'll run the API and give you an error. So the request then, R is going to retrieve the response when we run this. And the JSON here is the JSON that comes with the request library. That's not the standard 
JSON, but um, regardless, it gives the information. The items we're looking for is the latitude and longitude that's right here. So now how do we get those values out of this data? Well, one way we need to understand the format or the layout of the data, and we can import a real JSON and do a dump S, which is dump string, and put an indent equal to four or three, and it'll give a prettier output, and we'll see a, you know, a high-level view of the data. So as we can see on the top, the results is the first key that's in here, and then there's you know, embedded dictionaries into that. The next thing is a list. And geometry then is down to, it's, yeah, it is a list. And underneath geometry, we have location, which is where our information is. So we're going to plow down, drill down through this JSON file and get those specific values. So we'll drill down like any dictionary and list. So we'll start with results. That's the first um, value that was noted on the, when we printed that. I, I can't type. And the second thing was a list. We'll put uh, the indice of zero just for the first item on the list. This most likely gets it. If it's not, then we could change that. And geometry is the next key. And finally, location, which will give us the values that we're looking for, which is the Latin long. And there it is. That's the latitude and longitude. Um, we're going to need to break this out because we're going to use it in the next API to get the restaurants um, in this area. So if we copy the variable lat, um, our variable lat equal, is equal to, to this, we'll get the latitude. And if we change the next one to LNG, we'll get the longitude. So there we go. And that format we can use to try another API to find out what restaurants are around 42nd Street in New York. So the way we're going to do that is we'll create another payload, another variable with parameters. And this time we'll need the Latin long. That's what we're substituting in the API key. We also need the radius, which is the radius of the location for the restaurants and type equal to restaurants. We could type equal to museums, theaters. There, you can look at the documentation, but there are many things you can search for. We're just going to search for uh, restaurants here. So similar to the last time, we'll do the request with the URL and the parameters in payload one. And this should give us a JSON file list of restaurants in this location, which as we know, it's 42nd Street in New York. And the JSON file is there. Um, again, a lot of information. We're just looking for the names of the restaurants. Um, which should be in here somewhere, but probably all over the place. So what we can do now is loop through the uh, list the, um, of restaurants at this location. And remember, this was a list, so we can iterate through it. And results is the first key, so we'll start there, and then we'll print the number of names of restaurants in the JSON file and this should work. We should get a list of names. And there we have it. A list of names within 9,500 meters of the location that we selected in New York. So a great use case for this would be from a video I did a while back on extracting location data from images from JPEGs. So we extracted the location um, that these photographs were taken in by getting the latitude and longitude, which is stored in the metadata of the photograph, we took that information and I used a, a Google API geocoding like the one here and we're able to go through all the pictures, all the JPEGs on our computer and get the location that the photos were taken. So now we're going to use an API from the Rapid API website for to get the weather at a location. So we're going to use Danbury, Connecticut as the <coughs> test here. The units are imperial, meaning they'll be Fahrenheit. If you want Celsius, you could change the units to metric. The little twist here is that the authentication, the key, needs to be put in the headers of the request. This is different than what we've done before. We typically put the key in the payload. But this is the requirements of the API, so I've put the key here. I've sanitized it a little bit, um, but the idea is the same. It's a key value pair, and it has to be exactly that. Uh, key and that pair, um, you have to get your own API, obviously. And then we'll use the URL that was provided on the site. And we'll run this to get a JSON dump 
of the data again to get a kind of a pictorial view of the data so we know how to drill down and get the stuff we want as you can see you can also get the latitude and longitude here but the thing we're looking for this time is the temp which is 66.49 there's a lot of other other information you can get the sunrise sunset the cloudiness and so on but anyway we're going to drill down with this just to get the temperature in danbury connecticut so when we drill down with main and temp we get the temperature of 66.33 for the temperature in danbury and we could get other variables too but that's relatively easy so now when you thought all of this was getting way too easy there's a curveball coming at you and we're going to go to twitter and get the activity for my feed in Twitter. And the Twitter API requires a little more. Sometimes the API key is all you need. Other times you need to log in and then there's OAuth and a whole bunch of things. So Twitter is a little more complicated. You need a customer key, secret key, access token, secret, and you need all of these to authenticate so that you can see your uh, timeline. So you can get all this information on the site and I mentioned many times, I showed you that at the end. Um, but Twitter is also a little bit more difficult to access. So what we're doing is we're using a module. We're going to import a module called a tweep, Tweepy that will allow us to authenticate to Google. So rather than getting into all the weeds on the API and the authentication, we're just going to use a Python module called Tweepy. You'll have to install this with pip3, pip3 install Tweepy. And once you do that, then you will need the following keys that you can get on your code. So to access Twitter, you will need to walk through a questionnaire. They'll ask you some questions. So basically, they want uh, don't want people to just trolling through the information and using it for marketing. So they're a little pickier about this. They do provide the API, and we are able to connect to it here, but it's a little trickier. So once we get the keys, um, we use the API, the auth equal to the auth handler and the auth set access. And then we use the API to call that auth. And then the user is myself. You would obviously put your name in there. You can put other names in there too. Um, you just won't get the timeline for other names, but you can get other details like followers and, and stuff like that. So in this example, we're just going to get the public tweets on my feed so and here they are um it's not all of them but it's the top 20 and it shows what's going on at the moment on my twitter feed so you could parse this and get interesting stuff you could have alerts you could have this api going out at different times and based on what interests you then you could you know alert yourself so another thing you can do is find the followers um of a particular user so i'll do that there are other um, things you can do with this api i'm just using two of the most common ones here so no, i'm sorry not followers friends so i could look at all the friends i have in twitter which are probably not that many because i really don't use twitter that often <clears throat> but let's see so again we'll loop through this and presumably that i have more than one friend it'll have to be a list Although that's not a good assumption either. And then we'll give the screen name of the people that follow. Now, Twitter, I notice, only gives like the top. I'm not trying to say I have a lot of friends, but I think I have more than what they have here. And uh, Twitter just gives the top 20. I've asked about this. I haven't really got anything satisfactory in the way of an answer. But anyway, you can see the top 20 people that follow me or are my friends. And here I'm going to print out the screen name and the description of my friends if I really want to find out who's watching me. And there you can get a brief description of each of the friends or most of them. So we'll end on a very easy one. This is an API to get the currency between the dollar and the euro and other currencies as well. Um, it's on fixer.io. It's free for set up an account. As long as you're only looking for a base of euro, in my case, for example, I can't use a base of dollar, um, but that's really trivial to me. I just want to know how many euros I can buy with my dollars. I do travel to Europe quite a bit, or at least did before this pandemic. 
So that's interest me. So I want to know when it goes up and I have this set up. As you can see, I've commented out on the bottom, but I did have it set up to tell me when it was going up. I don't really, when it going down, it was less interested. So here you go, a JSON file with the rates. And as you can see, um, the base of the euro will show how many this is. I will get 85 cents for each dollar I spend. I'll get 85 uh, of euro. So I would like that to go up at some point. But that's the function here. And as you can see, it's a base euro. You can look on their site. They have some restrictions, but there is a freemium account that you can get a lot of information and convert it to whatever you want. So the dollar euro is the most popular one, I would imagine. But the yen and, and all other currencies are there as well. So that's an introduction on how to get APIs working in Python. So let me show you some examples of how to get to APIs and get the keys and various information. So to start with Google, if you go to googlecloud.free.com.free, you'll get prompted to log into the Google Cloud platform. You'll get a year free. Um, you will not be charged unless you upgrade to a developer account, which you do not need, at least for the purposes here. Um, and you ask for some basic information. You do need a credit card. They will not charge it. And like I said, it's a year free and you can go through the multitude of APIs that are here. So once you get to the dashboard, you set up a project and you can create credentials for all of the APIs here. You can go through them. There's lots of detail, documentation on each one of these and you'll find the links and the parameters and the requirements for them all here. So you can copy the API right into the clipboard here and then paste it into your program or a file. If you don't want to use a credit card, you can use the Here Developer Network as well. They have a free account that does not require a card and you can get all your APIs here. It's very similar to Google. So you sign up and there is a freemium version. When you go to your projects, you'll see the keys to create here. They're listed um, and you can create new ones if you feel the other ones were compromised. Like Google, there's also a lot of documentation. RapidAPI.com is also another great source for APIs. I use the weather in this video, the weather API, but there are a lot more. Again, you can set up a free account. You are a little restricted. Not all of the APIs are free, but a lot of them are, and you can easily go in. And what it has is an end to endpoint test, so you can see exactly the code in Python takes it a step further. You don't even need to figure that out. So it's a good site. And like I said, there are many API um, APIs at this site. For Twitter, you can go to the developer.twitter.com. Again, sign up here. You will be asked a few questions. It's almost like a job interview. And when you're finished that, you will get a free account that will allow you to do a lot of stuff. You can create a new project. And when you create the project, you'll see the keys and tokens here. And they don't show the keys or tokens. You have to generate them. So when you generate them, you need to know them and use them. But uh, if you forget them, then you'll have to regenerate new ones. And last but not least, we have Fixer.io, which is the financial site I use to get the currency information. It does have a restriction, the free account of 1,000 API calls a month. That did not impact me. Um, but you have everything you need here to play around with currencies. It, it handles most currencies. So I think it's a really good site to get started. There's one last thing I want to talk about regarding APIs, and that's this fantastic application called Postman. You can download it for free, and you can put your APIs right into Postman and test the parameters, and also you get feedback in JSON or in RAW, however you want it, and it tells you you know, what to expect and how you can pick out particular values, key values that you're looking for. So I highly recommend downloading this and using it if you're going to use a lot of APIs. So that's a whirlwind tour of REST APIs with Python. The key thing to remember here is when you're coding, you can't code in a vacuum. You have to interact with other applications and databases, and REST APIs has become one very popular way of doing that. I've put all the code that I used here on my GitHub site at the link below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Until the next time, thanks for watching.